Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. This is the TAFA and Chart Analysis for March 16th, 2022. And for once, I have to say Bitcoin is not afraid of the Fed. Now, when the Fed announced that they were going to hike interest rates six more times after this time this year, Bitcoin did actually dip about 1,000 points and the stock market did dip about 500, but they rallied and rallied more than ever before. And by the end of the day, we have recovered all those losses. So people were not actually afraid of the interest rate hikes as much as uh, people thought they were. So the big surprise was not that the Fed raised the interest rates by 25 basis points. That was pretty much guaranteed. There was no way they were not going to raise the uh, interest rate by 25 basis points. But it was the fact that they said they would raise it six more times this year. And that was pretty hawkish. Now, it wasn't the most hawkish thing because like the most hawkish Fed commissioner wanted to raise the basis, uh, wanted to raise the rate by 50 basis points today and they didn't actually do that. But they did actually say six more rate hikes for this year plus three more next year for a total of nine more uh, rate hikes. So that would actually bring the total uh, percentage of um, interest to about 2.5, which by the way is still fairly low uh, basically overall. Um, it's still fairly low overall historically, but much higher than it's actually been. They needed to do that to control a little bit of the housing market and also to curtail inflation. But generally, raising interest rates does actually um, constrict the supply of money and could cause a recession, but that doesn't really look to be the case. Raising interest rates did not really affect anything. I think a lot of people already had this priced in. So, it was not afraid of interest rates. However, Bitcoin is afraid of international problems. And I think part of the reason that Bitcoin's been doing pretty well is that Brent and crude oil has been below $100 lately. Um, it fell from a high of about 123 and it w went below 100 for the last two days. The prices at the gas pump has not come down, but I think like if it holds for a couple more days, it will probably come down. <clears throat> Joe Biden has already demanded that the gas prices start coming down because the price of crude oil has actually started coming down. Really not know, really not sure when the companies are going to comply, but we will actually see. Either way, if you look at the chart of Bitcoin over the last five days, um, you can see that it is clearly up. Whether you look at the top, the tops, or the bottoms, regardless of like which way you look at it, we are actually going up. Yes, we are kind of like coiling up here a little bit, but because the overall trend is up, I do believe that if we do break out, we will break out in an upward direction. So on the weekly, the Bitcoin graph looks really, really good and continue to look strong going into next week. And since you're and since you're not really afraid of the Fed announcement anymore, there's really not that much short term, shorter term to actually be afraid of it. Now, over the longer term, there's other things. There's also the black swan event of China actually aiding Russia and then like the U.S. declaring sanctions against China, which would tank the whole global economy. That is the worst thing that could happen to the economy outside of nuclear war, which is a remote possibility, although I wouldn't discount it right now. The war escalating can actually turn into many things. We really don't know what those are. Uh, on the monthly graph, as you can see, we're pretty much even. Um... The thing is, like, we've had, like, little humps. Like, uh, we had, like, a couple big humps and little humps. See, like, a big hump here, a smaller hump here. And I this isn't really that much of a hump, but I it's hard for me to see it going above, like, 42, 43,000 right now. If we go above 45,000, that's a big bull signal. But it's hard for me to see us going back, uh, going above 42, 43,000. It is coiling up, but I think it's just going to keep coiling and like have little ups and downs and not like any major uh, movement up. You can see that we've had some serious uh, volume over the last few days, but that hasn't re re really resulted in many price pumps. I am glad that more people are getting interested in Bitcoin, but it really hasn't um, involved too much price action. So I kind of see like 43,000 as a ceiling right now for us going up and definitely 45 as a ceiling. If we break 45, 46, then we have some really good bullish momentum. But it is really hard for me to see that based on the geopolitical situation. The fact that oil, the energy is going to be very costly for the next couple of months. And just like overall economic uncertainty, making people not want to invest in crypto, despite Ukraine and other countries basically legalizing crypto and all the crypto adoption that's actually been going on. So monthly wise, I think we are very, in a, I'm neutral. We're much, much more like in a contained type of uh, atmosphere. If you look further out in the three months, I think like we've actually uh, basically bottomed out. I still hold that the bottom was about 33,000. You see, we haven't really fallen past that bottom since uh, about two months ago. And I don't see us really falling past that bottom. As you can see, like since that bottom, each kind of like bottom spot has been a little higher than the last. So I don't really see us falling back 
uh, below 33,000. I think that was actually the end of it. And you can see on, even on the six month graph, essentially like after we came down, like we really haven't fallen um, that much shorter. Um, yes, the the tops really haven't been that much higher or any higher, but the bottoms actually have been higher. So overall, like ever since that initial fall and the hit at the $33,000 bottom, it is not indicating that we will actually drop again, regardless of like which graph I actually look at. Same thing here. If I look at the yearly graph, like the bottom for the yearly graph was actually last summer. Right now we're still above where we were last summer. And right now, like it is kind of trending up. If we actually take the same uh, timeline as last summer, we should actually be going up in a couple of weeks. But with the economic uncertainty going around, I, st I think we're probably going to coil for a couple of months and then maybe go up afterwards See um, after we see how everything is actually going to play out. In terms of the technical indicator numbers, <clears throat> On the daily, everything has switched to buy, and I actually agree with them this time. The oscillators are generally neutral, but the thing is, like, since the Fed meeting is over, and even though, like, the Fed actually was hawkish, um, prices went up, that means to me that people actually have a decent amount of confidence um, about what's going on right now. So I could see, like, some a positive movement going into the weekend. So I am a slightly bullish right now on the daily. On the weekly, I am also slightly bullish for next week. I think the EMA and the SMA for the 10 has switched to buy. So I'm slightly bullish going on into early next week. After that, I'm pretty much neutral because I still think like the situation with the war in Ukraine has to play itself out and that really won't be that easy. So I am actually only slightly bullish on the weekly going into early next week as well. On the monthly, um, I'm pretty much neutral on the monthly because I really don't know what's going to go on, what's going to actually happen. I really don't think any of those models really work, whether it's stock to flow or otherwise. I don't think any of those are actually going to work. I really think it's just like geopolitical situation wise, what actually happens. And it's very hard to predict what will actually happen. It does seem like both sides are trying to reach an agreement because obviously Ukraine doesn't want to keep getting bombed. And Russia is not making as much progress in the war as they had actually expected. They've gotten like Kyrgyzstan, and that's pretty much the only big city they've actually taken over. After about three weeks, they are losing a lot of people and casualties, and uh, it's costing them a lot of money, them being sanctioned at all. So the thing is, like, it could actually end within a few weeks, but it could drag on for months and months as well. I really wouldn't put my bet on either one. So monthly, I am at a neutral, wouldn't buy or sell. Weekly and daily, I am fairly bullish. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.